Okay, it is April 13th, it's about a uh, quarter of midnight or so, and uh, we're going to try to bring up the Magic One uh, home-built mini-computer here. So let me first off uh, power this guy on. Okay, and uh, blinky lights are good, so to orient, what we've got is a, uh, I powered it up with the clock stopped. This toggle can stop the clock. And uh, the various things we've got here are, this is a display that displays the current register contents of whatever register is selected by this dial. And we can select just about any of the registers, so it's an awfully nice feature. The two digits here show the current instruction being executed, and this dial here will let me select between different clock sources. So I have a single step clock, which is this little toggle switch, variable speed clock, which is this guy here, which is a little bit flaky. Uh, that's just a, uh, a pot that will, will run a 555 timer uh, clock. And then I've got a 1 and 4 megahertz crystals uh, that will represent the, the real clocks when I finally figure out exactly how fast I can push this. So the state of the world is things were looking pretty good. And last night, though, I ran into a problem with the conditional branch uh, circuit. And it was, the conditional branch was failing, uh, the microcode sequencer was doing an extra instruction fetch when it shouldn't. And uh, fortunately, Andrew Holm uh, came up with a rather nice solution, and he emailed that to me this morning, and I have just rewired this to, uh, to use his fix, and we will see if that actually fixed it. So what we want to do is uh, run the test program, which I have burned into the boot ROM, which is a Fibonacci function. It's going to compute Fibonacci 10. And let's just give it a shot. So what I want to do first, I'm going to go from stop to run. And I'm going to single step out to the first conditional branch. And actually, well, let me go ahead and uh, select the program counter so we can see where I am as I'm step in here, so we should get to address 8 here pretty soon. And there we go, so address 8, that's the Fibonacci function, and I'm going to step until I see an opcode of BD, which should happen here shortly. And there we go, so BD is the conditional branch instruction. In this particular case, it's going to, it should fall through. So we should fall through and see at address F, the instruction 19. So let's go ahead and step here and step again. Okay, we got to F, 19. Outstanding. So that worked. All right. Let's just see what happens then. So we'll stop the clock. Cross our fingers. I'm going to turn it to the variable speed clock. What happened there? I had a little glitch there. Yeah, let's hope that didn't change anything. When I stopped the clock, it should have cut that off. I'm going to have to look at that. So anyway, we will see what happens if I go from stop to run. 11 and 19. Okay, well, let's just turn it loose and see what happens. So eventually, um, I'm hoping we will see this halt light um, pop up. And Fibonacci will take a minute or two here. This, this variable speed clock isn't, isn't very fast, so I'm not sure how long it's going to run. Um, but it looks like we're doing something. We've got some good blinky lights going. And still keeping fingers crossed. Oh, all right. We got the halt. Deep breath. Stop the clock. Now let's uh, switch the switch to register A, which I am sure hoping is going to show me a 37. So DP, SP, one more is A. Cross your fingers. Yes! It works. Outstanding. Alright. 
Fibonacci of 10.